also maso fofo something. Hello, people of the internet. Getting back to work on my 69 VW Beetle, whose name is Ragnar Lothbrook, <laughs> that I'm restoring slash modifying to give away to one of you. The link is in the video description only. Don't get fooled by those spam bots in the YouTube comment sections pretending to be the creators. It's not, I will never tell you to message me on some weird app no one's ever heard of. Mission for today, get this thing in the booth and get something on this bare metal so it does not corrode. And then I can begin the fun process of doing bodywork and painting it myself. I'm gonna paint it. Before I can get this thing in the booth, I need to take care of the doors. Oh, those things heavy. This door is really, 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 really heavy. Look how bad this molding is. Oh. Pretty sure this is supposed to have screws on it. There's one right here. This car is like a toy. Like everything is just, you can take it apart of screws. Aha. Uh -huh. I think this is attached to this. Hey, watch out for this Pikachu tail. Thing is sharp as hell. There we go. That's out. Yep. That's what held it in. All right. There we go. VW Secret. Secret. This is factory glass. I want to be careful with this. Can I take it out without ruining it? Pretty sure I have new rubber weather stripping for that too, but just in case, that can be cleaned up. It wasn't bad. <laughs> Disassembled. Check. That noise you hear right now? Fred had a little bit of free time today, so I was able to pay him to knock out some fenders. Little random spots left to strip. So these little vents can eat my f***ing asshole. They absolutely destroy your whistle biscuit with a quickness. <laughs> that sentence made no sense unless you knew what I was talking about. Fred's putting in some work though. Knocked out the door and the fender already. Look at that. Nothing left to it. All I got left is a McDouble whistle biscuit, so it's not gonna fit inside those slots as easily. <laughs> Fred just finished up the last part, so all that stuff is taken care of. Now I have to DA everything in 180 grit. 180 grit. You can also use 150 grit to do this. You just you need to create some tooth in the metal because if you were just spray epoxy over this, you'd have the I guess you'd have chemical adhesion, but you wouldn't have mechanical adhesion. I'm probably gonna use like half a box of these things. Hey, they're made in Canada. Made in Canada. Crazy. Allow me to demonstrate. Just like that. Oh yeah, now you can see that dent. But that, this is what it's doing. I don't know if you can see the difference between that, that looks like metal, and then that looks like metal. That looks like different metal than that looks like different metal. Hey, did I do this enough? Yeah, it's getting rid of all the marks from this, too. Ah. So, it's good. can hear that but it's storming pretty good outside and I just got a phone call saying that it was hailing not too far from here 
So I had to bring the Bronco in with a quickness. I literally just like threw all this stuff off to the side and shoved the beetle back here so I could get it in. I mean, I don't see any hail yet. Yeah, it's got the mashed potato clouds. I don't know if I'm gonna get this thing in the paint booth tonight. I'm, I'm running behind. That's hail. That's hail. Wow. That was close. I have that Mercedes S580 outside, the one I was going to do a review on. Jeez! I can't believe I got the Bronco in just in time. I'm so lucky. That must be some thick German steel because there's not a dent on it. That's amazing. I thought for sure this car would be full of dents after that hailstorm, but I dried it off to look at the, the top and I can't see any dents on it anywhere. You got lucky, Mercedes, you got lucky. Well, this poor thing needs a paint job, so it really doesn't matter if I got hail dents on it. I don't see any dings. I guess that hail wasn't big enough. It sounded bad, probably because this building's roof is tinny. Welcome to the next day. I don't know if you saw that lizard in the tree. It was changed the same color as the bark. It was hiding eating ants. Anyway, I love this part. I don't know why I'm obsessed with taping, but this is fun. Where is the end of this? What kind of, oh. If you were a wax and grease remover, where would you be? Oh, there it is. I wiped down the entire car with wax and grease remover after I neutralized it, after I put the acid osphosomosomosfo. But I realized I didn't get all the dust off because the tape is having a hard time sticking. You can use water, wax and grease remover, mineral spirits, break clean, porcupine blood, and that will also suffice for neutralizing the osomosofosofosofin. Well, this stuff works good. And it's great at removing osomosofosofin. See, schmutt. You wanna keep doing this until these are completely clean from wiping. This is the exact same process that Fred did when he did the acid cleansing of the rust particles in the engine bay of the Ranger, because he stripped that down to bare metal too. And he actually called up the company that makes that stuff and spoke with them directly on the best process to do this. So. This is why paying attention in art class in high school, elementary school, made a big difference. Because without it, I wouldn't have such excellent construction paper skills. I even think this is construction paper. I broke my nail. You can still see my real nail underneath. It's just the dip powder cracked. Can she round the corner with tape without making it? No, that looks terrible. I've only filmed like 25% of this process today, especially the wax and grease. I waxed and greased the whole car like 10 times. Well, that's not even close to being the right shape, but it's all right. Did I ever tell you about how time consuming prepping a car for paint is? Oh, geez. Okay, it is incredibly hot in this paint booth right now. Like, really hot. But 103 degrees? It's gonna be pretty loud in here because I have to have the vent fans on just to try to draw some of that hot air out. But I still gotta tape up the doors and a little bit of the stuff that I have hung up before I can spray some epoxy on it. It's already been three 
hours and I'm still not done taping. It's gotten a little bit hotter. It's 106 degrees Fahrenheit in that paint booth right now with the fan on. I have to put a paint suit on. This is ridiculous. I'm half tempted to lay on the floor right now, but it's probably really dirty. I have all the taping done. It took me about four hours. Now I just gotta do wax and grease with waterborne wax and grease remover. So this stuff right here is the waterborne wax and grease remover. I already did everything with the solvent base. So I'm gonna go over it again with this probably two more times until I have no residue coming off on the microfiber. Then I'll know it's a perfectly clean surface. You can see these vents had a lot of that gunk in there still. So I'm gonna wipe these things down like three or four times until I make sure that it's completely clean. This is my weapon of choice. Fred left me his gun. It's uh, made in Japan. A nest Avata. Avata. Iwata. So uh, I used this gun before. I really like this gun, actually. I don't have my own, so. Um, I'm gonna do two coats of epoxy. It's a one to one ratio. And I gotta let it sit for 45 minutes to an hour to flash between coats. Uh, that was just Fred's specific instructions and he's like a paint messiah. So I listened to what that dude says because He's, he is really damn good at painting. So, um, yeah, I got to suit up and suffer. It's 110 in here. Luckily, epoxy isn't really affected by the heat, unlike paint. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, here goes. Two coats of epoxy on everything. The car, trunk lid. It stinks in here. Hi, it's the last day in this video, I promise. That was so much work to take this off, and now I'm just peeling it. wondering about the engine bay and why I'm not painting inside there and that's because the entire firewall on the sides have heat insulation blanket on them so I just think it would look stupid to paint just the front here body color it just wouldn't match it would look dumb in my opinion really the only paintable surfaces in the engine bay and under the frunk is just down along where the latch is at and my intention is to paint that a uh, semi flat black just because I feel it'll look a lot better since there's so much heat insulation in there to begin with and I'm gonna carpet the frunk area with some black carpeting. So some takeaways from last night painting. I actually screwed up when I first started out because I didn't stir the paint portion of the epoxy uh, at all. <laughs> I forgot. I would shook the hell out of this thing earlier and then when I pop the lid off to start mixing it looked great so I didn't really think anything of it and the top maybe that much of the can was really thin consistency and I've never used this product before so I didn't know what it was supposed to look like so I mixed my cup with the activator and as I started spraying it it was going through product super fast and it was spraying almost like a candy coat it was very translucent it wasn't giving good coverage and then it started fish eyeing like crazy because it wasn't giving good coverage. I'd use more product. And I was like, what is going on here? What is wrong with what I'm doing? So when I went to mix up my second hopper on the paint gun, because I went through it almost instantly, a big clump of this, like almost like honey, fell into the mixing cup. And I was like, oh, I forgot to mix <laughs> this 
stir this. So I ended up pouring that out and then using my activator first, filling that up to uh, the 50% mark. And then I poured in this stuff after I stirred it, which is super thick consistency and sprayed out the rest of my first coat. And it sprayed beautifully after that. It was laying down, it wasn't translucent anymore, no more fish eyes and it was nice. So then my second coat all went on perfectly. There's zero fish eye, zero issues spraying it because then I knew how to mix this product correctly. So I just have fish eyes on my first coat, which is underneath it here on the front fender. And there was a bunch because I pretty much started on the roof where it started fish eyeing and I just kept laying into it even heavier because it was spraying so translucent and thin. And, uh, but it all got covered up with a second coat and it doesn't matter anyway, because this is all getting sanded. This is just so I can body work it. You can see the areas I did after I figured out my issue though, it sprayed super nice and normal like I should have been expecting before I screwed up <laughs> with the mixing portion. But again, doesn't really matter. It's just the epoxy coat. And uh, next, I'm actually gonna be bringing this over to the guys next door shop and Fred is gonna make a video on the body working process, kind of like he's doing in the focus. I wanna tie their channel in a little bit and help those guys out. And also I would have like six or seven body working videos of nothing but sanding and that would be really boring to film. And then once the body work is done, I will be doing the final painting of the car. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. And uh, next video I got coming for you, I'm gonna be filming on my Ur Quattro. I got some special parts that came in for it finally. And then I'll be jumping back on the Beetle. Bye.